So we hear a lot, Clutch Gaming has a lot of um, analytics that they're working on, a lot of different ways to, to try to solve the game. But, but you yourself has, have said that, you know, we don't know what's actually going to be useful for the LCS team. Maybe 99% of it won't be. Is there anything so far that that looks like it could be promising? Yeah, so the 99% thing is actually not just an estimate. Like, we've tried hundreds of things, and the vast majority of them are sitting on the bottom of a drawer, never to be used again. And so for us, we have seen a couple of maybe interesting things. One of them was just uh, you know pathing and just getting better idea of pathing. But so far, it's completely useless comparatively. The human mind is pretty interesting. People who are observers or scouts, our scouts, our analysts, have a better sense of the game than our data does right now. The hope here is that we can like tease apart the bias such that as we move forward, we're able to find things. But for the most part, we're just like gold mining. We're just like you know shoveling the pan, trying to see specks of gold in there. And if we see a speck of gold, it's like call our friends over, say let's drill deeper here and hope for the best. And so far, it's still really early days for us. Mm -hmm. The discoveries in baseball and basketball took decades to do. The discoveries in football still may not even come yet. That said, we're in a good spot right now because we think that we have not only the stability and the resources to invest into this, but also with franchising and with the fact the LCS is currently designed the way it is, we have the time. And I think that's something that other teams in the past have wanted to do, but just didn't have the time and resources to do. So we're really happy to pursue it. Without the analytics, before they get there, what is the process of scouting? So most of it's actually just being very, very um, scientifically method driven. And so it's just having hypotheses. It's trying to tease out bias. It's thinking really deeply about let's like examine this player in a vacuum as opposed to in context. The context really skews your perception. There are a lot of players who were on worse teams last year. And as it turns out, if your team is losing, it's really hard to look good at what you do. And so because of that, a lot of what we wanted to do for these guys was, look, let's try to evaluate them on more you know, independent scales. Are we good at doing that? Absolutely not. We're, we're not even close to being good at doing it. But you have to start somewhere. It's a very, very, very hard problem. But if you don't start somewhere, you can never solve it. And so just like state your priors, state your assumptions, and then go for it. What regions were you guys looking at in terms of scouting for, for an import slot? Sure. So we were looking at China, Taiwan, Brazil, Europe, South Korea. And, and why don't we usually see imports from most of those regions? Almost all imports uh, come from Korea, sometimes from EU. Surprisingly, not many from China, um, not many from Taiwan either. Yeah, that's probably a strong bias. It's, it's a bias issue, probably. Korea is considered the best region. So the question is, like, how much talent is in Korea? And the answer is probably a lot. And there is just bias on that front. Also, there haven't been many resources poured into scouting the other areas, right? So there are a lot of staff and people out here, you know, Korean players out here, are your biggest resource. And they tell you, hey, like, Lyra, what do you think of so-and-so player? And he'll know because he's solo queued against them, so he'll know. And if, if we're like, hey, Apollo, what do you think of X and Y NA player? Because you solo queue a lot. They'll tell you as well. Most organizations haven't had the resources to have a scouting org before, so it's just harder to look at some of those regions. We do think that you know China has a lot of talent. We think Europe has a lot of talent. Even South America has a lot of talent that's just untapped. But it's just, it just requires more work and more diligence on that front. Also, Korea is just really awesome. They're just really good at this game, and so, so is Europe. So it, that, it's not to take away from how good those guys are, because those guys are grade 1 through 20. What does it take to scout in these countries where you don't have players who can advise you? Having people there to, to ask the players who are there for their advice, and you know, just watching a lot of footage on their, their play. Uh, some of it's hard to find. and You probably know this as well. It's, it's really hard to find footage in Asia unless you speak the language. And so part of it is just you know, having people on the floor who s speak the language and look at the film and look at the resources there. And so it's, you know, in talking to our guys, one of the big things that comes up is their, their feeling about, hey, we're really upset about this. We spent so much time working on all this stuff and we like, picked up no one from China or no one from Brazil. And what I tell them is like, no, this is actually the most useful thing we've done. We'll hopefully, like our analytics hopefully will get there at some point. But right now, just you know, having an idea of where players are at and just watching and tracking their growth over the next year, it's going to be so much fun. 
you recently said that that the roster you guys have, you know, could land first place, could also land sixth place. What's what's Clutch's ideology on on results? Sure. So one of the big things for us, and I think this is true for humans in general, is that humans are really bad at thinking about results probabilistically. When we look at something and when we think about the outcome of an example, when we flip a coin, people see the it came out heads. They assume it's just heads. You either win or you lose. There's no in between. And the real answer is when you flip a coin, it's like 50-50. Sometimes it's heads and sometimes it's tails. And so when we look at results in terms of first place, the sixth place, or first place, the tenth place, uh, there's always a chance for all those outcomes. The best team in the league, and you see the NBA for this, the best team in the league right now is the Golden State Warriors in terms of their talent pool. But they're, you know, they lose sometimes because they're not going to win all their games. They win the majority of their games. We're also going to win, win the majority of our games. But that's a different question than they will win for sure or they won't win for sure, and therefore your decisions should be changed as a result. We think that the first place team in the NALCS, like the team that we project to be a first place team, you know, is first place the majority of the time, like maybe 60, 70 percent of the time. But that also means that 30 to 40 percent of the time, the second place team could be first place, the third best team could be first place, the fourth best team could be first place. And so that's how we see it. It's certainly more likely for us to be a sixth place team than it is to be a first place team. And that's just a fact, right? The, the actual like marginal variance between third and sixth is pretty small, all things considered. That said, does that mean we have no chance of making first place? Hell no, we definitely have a solid chance. And if our team improves and we have things go our way, you know, there, if we have, there's a 50-50 at Baron, and that's the difference between winning the game and losing the game, and we have to take it because that 50-50 is, uh, if we don't take it, we'll lose 100% of the time. We should take the 50-50, but from the outcome of analysis, we should think about that game as like, whoa, we lose this game like 55% of the time. Do we really deserve a full win from this game as opposed to 45% of a win? We probably deserve 45% of the win. Now, if we can get that to happen the vast majority of the time, maybe there are underlying things we just don't understand about why we're so good or why we're so bad, <laughs> but, and now we have to examine. But at the end of the day, it's very possible for any team to fall in that outcome. If you're the seventh best team in the league, the probability of you making first is pretty small. It might be negligibly small. And the probability of you being in 10th place is pretty high. It might be really high. For us, we think that we're a team that is, uh, has a playoff type floor and a world type upside. And so that's our hope right now and that's our goal. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? I think we've mentioned this before, but there is no way we know anything right now. There is absolutely no way we know anything right now compared to where we'll be three years from now. If it's actually the case that we know everything right now, we've made a mistake. And I think that's something that people should be aware of. League of Legends three years ago was very different from this year. League of Legends three years from now should be very different from this year. And it's not the patches that's doing that. The patches are a big component of it, but people are just getting better. And it's really important to keep an open mind in terms of how you can get better and how to change and adapt. Because at the end of the day, if you Ask me like seven years ago, what would you be doing in seven years? This is not the answer. But you know what also wasn't around seven years ago? iPhones weren't around seven years ago. Instagram was around seven years ago. People weren't sure Facebook would be big seven years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least as big as it is today. Whole Foods is owned by Amazon today. Like how crazy is that? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important just to like let people know you should be fans of this year. You should be fans of what your players do. You should be fans of people spending money to invest into your game and your sport. But also know that no one knows the future. And so we really want to respect the fact that there are so many unknown things out there. And hopefully we'll adapt to it, but we'll let people know. We'll let people know when we run into something we don't know. And we'll let people know that when we run into it that we were completely clueless. And that we were just shooting darts into the, onto the wall and hoping for the best. And hopefully we can string together enough things where we win enough coin flips for us to think, hey, we're actually really good at this, but we definitely aren't right now. And it doesn't matter that we started six months before the other non-endemic teams. It doesn't matter that we're three years behind the current endemic teams on some, some aspects of the game. All that matters for us is just making sure we keep this mentality of we're not there yet, we need to keep working to it, and hopefully we'll figure something out, and then hopefully we'll win.
For more league interviews and analysis, subscribe to our channel. You can also find stats, discussions, and more on our website and mobile app at blitzesports.com.